Hi there. So I thought I'd talk about a key painting from uh, 2020, produced during lockdown. It's titled, What a Catalyst You Turned Out to Be. Now, that is a direct line from Eaton Rifles by The Jam, for those of you who maybe think it sounded slightly familiar. Um, that doesn't describe necessarily what's going on in the picture. It's literally the environment that I was in, so it, it tributes to various people that have um, and continue to influence and shape my my output. Yeah, so the figure contained within this isn't in any way um, meant to map onto any particular human being. I think you probably understand that about my work already. Um, but I thought I'd talk a little bit about it and how I made it because it it may not be immediately apparent and this painting has gone on to actually um, prompt uh, for the first time ever a limited edition screen print um, that I've actually got uh, editioned by a quite well established in fact a very well established London print studio um, K2 screen in Bermondsey London and they've done a fantastic job and uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it promoted there. And you can also now find it on my shop, on my website and various other good platforms. Yeah, um, I'm very proud of this work. I'm proud of the original painting and it's a bit of a breakthrough painting for me, I think. And I'm also very excited and proud of the print, which is already selling very well. Um, now. Let me tell you a little bit about how I was making this painting. If you look carefully, you'll see there are nine, quad, nine, nine sort of sections to it. And the reason for that is I was working um, to produce a whole series of paintings similar to this one on these A6 um, primed postcard size pieces of card. And the reason for that was I was establishing small little paintings, in what seemed like independent paintings on each one. Like this, for example, yeah. Or like that. But obviously the colour palette was similar across all of them. And then I would rearrange nine of them onto a particular grid and see what compositions emerged and out of that I got about eight or ten paintings where I got a few surprises that I wouldn't have got if I'd just worked out on um, a board this size. Yeah, you got me? So so that was one um, one breakthrough for me was part of part, introducing a new process there and that process was around composition. The second breakthrough for me was really my colour palette and how I determined the colours. Now, for a long while I would work in oil paint and I would probably lay out my palette for every session. Sometimes I was mixing up oil paint with various mediums and mixing up in, up in jars and storage containers so that I could reuse that oil paint and that's when I was working larger. During lockdown, I decided in my home studio, where I am now, that oil paint wasn't a very good idea, especially when I'm already working alongside um, other media that either require me to be uh, ex uh, meticulous around dust and so on, if I'm drawing or printmaking. And also the ventilation here isn't great. If I open uh, the, the Velux window here, then that's great, but it doesn't really work in winter, you see. So uh, I had to go down the acrylic route. I, for a long time, I was quite anti-acrylic. I always thought it was a plastic version of real paint, um, but couldn't be more. My opinion couldn't have changed more. I, th I, th I think acrylic paint has moved on. I've moved on. And um, what the breakthrough with colour is really pre-mixing everything now in these little jars. Now I love all sorts of pasta and I keep the jars from the sauces. I love honey and I eat a lot of honey. And what else? Um, oh, ginseng tea from Hong Kong. And so I've got these great containers here and depending on the frequency of the colors that I use, I use a different size container. Anyway, they, are, they have helped me 
to control my color relationships and pare down my color relationships a little bit more and get greater consistency in the kinds of uh, harmonies and tonal relationships that I want to set up. So the result of those two breakthroughs are that, that I was able to set up all sorts of points of interference or conjunction, if you like, between each cell and the rhythms that actually run across the painting more broadly. Yeah? And this isn't a purely dry abstract sort of um, investigation, although I love abstract art, the figure is central to what I do. It's very, it's, it's inescapable for me. And what this has allowed me to do is bring in all my different sources. So whether I'm looking at European painting and I'm thinking about the tremendous sort of compositions and colour relationships in, in paintings by Poussin, for example, if I tried to emulate those directly, I'd go mad and couldn't do it anyway. And it would look, it would look different if I was only channeling those sort of, um, those sort of sources directly, yeah? if I tried to do it just on, on one panel. So they kind of crept in separately, but what else I was able to bring in alongside those and assimilate was my interest in votive art and heraldry and all sorts of art I've seen in Asia and on various trips to India, where there's a much more symbolic and um, abstracted approach to the human figure. And this, this is across all sorts of religious um, uh, uh, and, and cultural practices where meaning is, uh, meaning is dispersed, yeah? But there's a formal potency that seems to connect all these disparate religions and disparate figurative traditions. There's a formal potency that I, I see, they're like echoes. So I've seen in Romanesque art, for example, across Europe, similarities between Romanesque sculpture and what I've, I saw in southern India in Chola bronzes, for example. And that slight sort of playful, childish... Um, I, I hesitate to use the word crude, but certainly they're not refined like a Greek um, classical sculpture is refined. Approach to the figure draws me again and again and again, that slight sort of um, vital roughness to the figuration, the crudeness. You get it in early, early sort of Egyptian figures and in very early Greek. And those wonderful little figures you can see in British Museum and other great collections. Those are all the dif disparate sort of things that I needed a pictorial language to channel into my compositions and my my colour harmonies that I could bring together, yeah. So, so that's kind of what was going on for me in the in the lockdown world of 2020, and that has continued to be explored in in new particular directions for 2021. Okay, so there you have it. A bit of a an informal, unscripted ramble around this painting but hey it's it's there it's on the wall it does its own talking and um, I'm very much of the opinion that, that is what you will bring from your looking as well that will unfold things for you that you don't need me standing here actually filling the bits in there's enough going on um, visually here for you to map onto other things and 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 make your own discoveries in there and that is to be encouraged and uh, applauded yeah so what well, how can i finish keep on looking keep on looking keep on looking at me but keep on looking more broadly if you love art there's all sorts of uh, different entry points yeah so uh, shut up robert you've said enough for today um check out some other videos and just hang around here and we'll talk again okay over and out